Hello Toastmasters and most welcome guests, Janine. Do you know what is the VP of PR and what it does? You might know, you might not know, I'll tell you. The VP of PR stands for Vice President of Public Relations. And what it does is basically to bring guests to the club. And you can do that by managing the, the club's image and advertising the club on social media, etc. and blah, 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 blah. This is what everybody tells you about the VP of PR. And I'm not here to talk about it. I'm here to tell you what no one else tells you about being the VP of PR. The number one thing that no one tells you is that work-life balance is important. In this case, work-life volunteering balance. This is important. Because the VP of PR role is such an amazing role, so interesting. You can do so many things. You can organize events. You can go to events and talk to people to get them to your club. You can mess with video editing, image editing, and social media. You can get lost in the role and spend too much time in it, but you should not do that. Because like at work, if you work too much, you might burn out. With Toastmasters, it's the same. You might burn out. And listen to me when I tell you that, because I've been guilty of that in the past. Like a couple of years ago, I was working and attending university at the same time. And I was working on average around 10 hours per day, some days even 14 hours. All I did was work and in the weekends I would just study or do projects for university. And after one year and a half of that, I burned out and I lost all motivation to work, which is not good. But then I figured out how to have work-life balance and started working less and things went better. But then came Toastmasters. And Toastmasters is not quite work, but it's not quite life either. It's a different thing. And it was a new agent in this system that was balanced and the system exploded. I started doing Toastmasters at work time or sometimes doing Toastmasters too much in the evenings. I was stressing and I never got to the point that I burned out, but I could see that was going into that direction because I knew how it felt in the past. So I had to take action. And then I got my priorities straighter. Now I have a balance for work, life and volunteering. And my priorities right now are clearer, at least clearer than last time. And they are, work is the first thing. Toastmasters are not, does not interfere with work anymore. If I have work to do and Toastmasters to do, work will win. The second priority is working out. Yes, like yesterday I had to prepare for this speech, but I had to go to the gym too. And I went to the gym and it was not a rush session. I took my time, did my best. I showed no mercy to the weights like usual. And then I went to Toastmasters because Toastmasters is my third priority. And I think you should all figure this out if you're volunteering because work-life volunteering balance is important. And no one tells about that, so I'm telling you. What? Are you saying something? I think I'm hearing something. Come again? Okay. I think I'm hearing your thoughts because I know what you're thinking. But how can you balance work, life, and volunteering? Three things. And I tell you right now, it's protocol, process, a plan, a well-determined set of actions taken to achieve a desired end. Call it however you wish, you need to have a plan. What you do weekly, what you do monthly, what you do every semester. Have that well-defined and don't do more than that, but don't do less either, do exactly that. And by having that, you know exactly how much time you spend in a row and you can plan yourself accordingly and you never burn out. You always have the balance you need. And sometimes we might get to some extraordinary situations like the current year in which we have less gas because of quarantine and stuff. And you might get desperate and try to do more than you need but focus on the plan. If the plan is not bringing enough guests, then change the plan slowly and follow the new plan. Put something else in the plan, take something that's not working out, but don't do too much, otherwise you'll burn out. And if it happens, it's worse for everyone, because it's worse for you and for the club because it loses an officer. So keep the balance, keep the plan and follow the plan. 
And this is also good because you come up with a succession plan. Because let's face it, at some point, I will not be the VP PI anymore. This will happen. It might be for many reasons. Like I might stop doing Toastmasters because I found a different hobby. I don't know. I might leave for another role, more likely. Or I might even leave Vancouver. Like I have no plans of doing that. And by the way, one month ago, I got my permanent residency. And I plan on exercising my permanent resident status in Vancouver. So I don't plan on leaving, but it might happen. And if I leave, we'll have a succession plan. So the next VPPR hits the ground running and can already do its job well and build on top of the plan that we have. So this is good for the club to have a plan and follow the plan. Don't do more and don't do less either, please. So that's something that some people tell you about that actually, but not enough. So I'm telling you again. Have a plan and do it. Lastly, the third thing no one's tell you about being the VP of PR is that as the VP of PR, you're also a club officer. And you are Tolson Master volunteer as a role, as a whole. And you need to have your own reasons to be that. And I tell you this because your role goes above your VP of PR status. Like, you are responsible for the well-being of the club like every other officer. And I've done projects with our VP of membership, the Major VP of Education, Paul Rosteo, other members like Nicoletta, and many other projects that would help the club to retain members and to get guests. It's part of the PVPR, but retaining members is not exactly, but it's part of being an officer. Or even mentioning the club contest, we got Krishnan to represent us on our area, area contest. This is not part of the PPR role, but this is part of being a club officer, the well-being of the club and its members. And you're also a Toastmasters volunteer as a, role, as a whole. And by my time spent that, I realized that sometimes it can feel like an ungrateful role. I don't mean about the VPPR exactly, because Cloverleaf is great, I tell you right now. Members at Cloverleaf are very supportive. I got support in literally every project I tried, and I can't complain, but I think that Cloverleaf is kind of the exception to the rule. Because I've been around, you know, around the District 96. I'm also an area director in a different area. I'm the manager of the meetup page of the District 96. I help with the YouTube channel of the District 96 too. And I'm very close to another club. I know the executive and its members and how they work. And the impression that I got in these two years is that most members don't really care much. Yes, it's like they want to come to Toastmasters and go to the meetings and have fun, give speeches, but then they want to leave and forget about Toastmasters. They don't want to do more work. And the problem is, the problem is this is completely fine. Like why would they have to volunteer more? If they're a member, they're already paying, they're already going to the meetings, they're doing the roles, and that's enough. That's all they have to do. There's nothing else that's expected. If you volunteer, it's good, but that's not necessary. Even as I guess, just by coming to the meeting, you are already making the meeting more interesting. That's, your, that's enough, nothing more is expected. However, if you're volunteering, you might find yourself writing an email at late night, an email that most of the recipients will ignore, or filling some form on a Friday night, or working on the weekends for Toastmasters, and that might feel like a thankless job. In that these moments, you need to remind yourself why you do it. What are your reasons of doing it? And you should have them. You should not do it as only for others. You should have your own reasons to do it. Because if you find yourself in these situations, it's no problem. Because you know exactly why you are doing it and you just keep doing it without losing motivation. And for me, the reasons I do it are mostly, the most important is personal growth, I'd say. Taking leadership roles in the district and in the club, I think it helps me at work. And in personal life too, at work, I can see that in many tasks and projects, I'm naturally leading the discussions and the implementations, and this is good. And also uh, in personal life, this is the most important reason. The second most important reason for me is the people at Toastmasters. 
by volunteering Toastmasters, you get to meet interesting people and you interact with them. Right now, not so much because of what's going on. We don't meet people anymore, but this used to be a big factor, which is big. And the third reason for me is Toastmasters itself. Like, I like Toastmasters, I like participating, and someone has got to do the work for it to keep running. Many people have to, and why not be one of them? So that's one of the reasons I volunteer. And that's all I have to tell you that no one tells you about. And if there is one takeaway you should take from, from this speech is that volunteering is, can be very interesting, can be fruitful, but you should find your own reasons for doing it. Do it for you, not only for others. And if you're interesting, you want to try some volunteering, you want to test the waters, I have the perfect opportunity for you. I'm organizing an area contest for this Saturday and the need of volunteers. And like I told you, it's hard to find volunteers, so I'm looking for you to help me. And it will be a great opportunity to try some volunteering. I hope you get inspired and you find your own reasons to do it. And I hope you find them fast before this Saturday and send me a message because it would be really great. So that's all that I have. Hope you volunteer. I, I need volunteers. I'm kind of desperate. So yeah. please go. Oh. Madam Toastmasters. Very good. Very good. One more, Hilder.